Can you hear me? Hey, hey, here, here you are. I can see you. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good, mate. Pretty good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great, man. I'm still trying to figure out all this technology stuff. You know, I'm not really <laughs> me too, bro. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so I was telling everybody about uh about your platform, how you you know a lot about the sport, your Instagram, <laughs> you're showing uh different moves and techniques and things like that. Tell tell uh everybody that subscribed to my platform, like mm. us a little bit about your history. All right, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I started the channel. I really wanted to teach uh, beginners boxing. Excuse the train at the moment. It's just going by. But I wanted to teach beginners like basic fundamental boxing, but, you know, at a higher level, but just simplified, but with some like camera, you know, angles and stuff just in a slightly different way. And it kind of formed into covering fights and stuff like that. Now I just because I've got like a an artistic side, I guess. I just throw a lot of stuff, you know, against the wall to see what happens. But my goal really was to try to teach beginners boxing. So, um, and I'm actually just, I was just out in the in the park today shooting some more videos just to go over some of the old stuff to get some new footage out there. So I'll be putting a bit more of that on the gram as well and then some of the short videos too. And then try to cover some fights on the on the main channel. But yeah. Just wow, to, man. That, yeah, that's go ahead. Pretty good, man. Y'all, y'all uh, go so, uh, follow him on Instagram, man. He's got a lot of helpful videos. I saw you uh, recently posted um, some guys sparring in uh, what yeah. Gleason's gym. Yeah, yeah, Gleason's. That's where I've, I've, you know, trained and fought for a few years as an amateur. But now I, I'm in there every week, and you know, I just. Um, you never know who pops up and spars. That guy that was sparring, actually, I, I did an interview with him on the channel. He was supposed to spar Errol Spence's cousin, apparently. And it did, the guy never, I don't know what happened to that, but he ended up sparring the other guy. And I was right there and I just took some footage. But yeah, that's um, my new Instagram. I'm just starting up a new page. But I'm just going to put a bunch of stuff from the gym that, you know, I just might see that comes up in the gym that looks cool and just put it on on the gram, you know? Wow, man. Yeah, I, I like your form, your technique, and um Thanks, yeah, man. It's a, yeah, it's a, just a great channel and uh Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I'm gonna do a lot more um of those videos again because I, I, I did a lot of those previously, but I think I'm trying to level up the the content a bit now and go back over some of the techniques and and I, like I said I just started again today and just with the stance but I just want to reach out and touch beginners really you know or anyone that's just new to the sport to try to get um you know cuz I got there's a lot of trainers in there that I'm so grateful that help me you know that they're, they're at a very high level so I'm I'm constantly asking them questions you know I'm a very curious dude so I'm like what do what you know I'm every week I'm like, what? How do you do this? So I try to bring a higher level just down a little bit to beginners and help them understand. There's some a couple of steps you can take to get pretty good technique quickly. You know, that's the whole ethos really of the channel from a teaching point of view. So yeah, man, it's like uh, no matter how many years you spend in the sport of boxing, you you always learning. Like there's always new things absolutely. to learn about. Absolutely, like, absolutely, you know, absolutely. Punch placement defense i mean mindset there's all kinds it's like it's like a violent chess game you can it's always it's so true there. it's so is it is like literally the deepest sport you could ever imagine you know fighting oh, yeah, yeah. mma whatever boxing but like it's like I've, sometimes i wake up i wake up every day trying you know looking and reading and watching short videos or whatever just to learn more but I, you, I feel like, you know, I've, I've even scraped the surface of what there is to know about this sport. When you really listen to some guys that really know their stuff or some girls that really know their stuff, I'm like, wow, what, how did I not know that? And it's just <laughs> yeah. you know, scratching the surface of what's the, what there is to know, really, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, sorry to jump in. I know you have, um, sorry, mate, uh, James Ali Bashir on your show. And yeah. when you talk about the teachers of the sport, you know, like they have a totally different like wisdom on the whole sport. And I'm just like, I love those interviews you do with him, by the way. They're great. Oh, I, I, I appreciate that. I was, I was just about to mention Coach James and how 
uh, we talk all the time, and he was telling me the importance of uh, throwing feints, especially as a heavyweight. And see, when when I was boxing, like in the gym, I never even knew that. I was like, yeah, I wish I knew all that back when I was fighting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And there's there's um throwing feints is a, it's quite a skillful thing to do. You know, like they they they're not the easiest thing to get really good. You know, throwing a feint can be can look quite easy, but there's a science behind it too because you you can actually get quite tired from throwing feints if you don't breathe properly and if you don't if you do it too like, you know, it's part of acting really. You're trying to sell something to another fighter. So if you don't sell it properly, it can work against you, but you can also tire out quickly if you're over fainting and you're not doing it right, you know. There's a there's a you know, even even just that, that alone, little stuff like that. You know, there's so many layers to every single aspect of boxing. It's fascinating. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh yeah, that that when I when I first started sparring, the the quickest thing I had to learn was my breath control. I'm like, man, three minutes feels like an hour. So you gotta <laughs> learn how to breathe. <laughs> it's like running a marathon while getting punched. You know. I it's know, bro. I know. And you're in there, and you're getting punched, and you're tired, and you think, shit. <laughs> but yeah. the, the breathing part is interesting too, because it's like uh, it's like a lot of the boxing things like come down to you know that's why it's so mentally driven because a lot of it isn't about tough guy. It's not about how many press ups and push ups and all this stuff. It's like the mental side is so key. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah the, the mental side. Um, uh, I used to talk to Tommy Brooks, a great trainer from a uh, train Holyfield, Mike Tyson. Okay. And, uh, yeah. He was saying like, you know, if your mind's right, you could hit a guy with a bag of bricks and he's not going anywhere. Even Andre Ward <laughs> talked about, yeah, told him, just make up your mind. You're not going down. So, bro, I literally that, just, I watched that interview literally a couple of days ago about the same thing where he 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 he. I think he was fighting Edison Miranda at the time, and um, yeah. he spoke about that. Literally, I watched that because like it's yeah, mind over matter too, and um, like even with the with the Canelo Mongia fight just recently, like because Mongia, I feel like there was a slight distraction that took him off guard a little bit and he got cracked with a shot he didn't see. I felt like if he did see that and bit down and knew it was coming and, and mentally prepared, he could have taken that shot. But, you know, mentality and just, yeah, what Andre Ward, I was a big fan of his back in the day, big time. For videos like that, you know, watching stuff like that, really fascinating. And Virgil Hunter too, you know, another teacher of the sport. Love those trainers. Uh, shout out to Bruce Gas in the uh, chat. Thanks for tuning in. Y'all go subscribe to Bruce Gas Boxing Jazz and more. Appreciate mm -hmm. you, man. But yeah, speaking of Andre Ward, did you check out uh, his documentary? I checked it out a couple weeks ago. I think it was on, uh, uh, was it Netflix or who? I think it might have been. It might. Andre Ward? I think it might. Yeah, I've, I saw it a few months ago when it came out. It might have been on Showtime. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah, 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 I, yeah sure. I don't think I watched the whole thing all the way through, but um, I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I, I used to like honestly him, him and Virgil Hunter used to watch all their interviews like, back from my like, early two thousands. So I was like that. That was the more raw like info I used to get about boxing. I think I remember his documentary. I don't remember loving it. I remember thinking this is all right. What did you think of it? Yeah, I thought it was uh. I thought it was okay, you know. Um, he, I didn't know so much that he had such a hard background. That that part kind of surprised me, uh, you know. And, you know, I knew he grew up in Oakland, which can be a rough neighborhood, but I didn't know he had, like, messed around with drugs and stuff because he's so disciplined right now. I never would have guessed that, you know, he was dabbling in those type of things. But, that surprised me too, actually, because I knew I knew he had a rough background. I knew his dad was a heroin addict and his mom was like, um, you know, a drug addict as well. I knew he definitely came up. I didn't know that he was selling crack. <laughs> I didn't know that surprised yeah, me, you know, know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, oh, okay. disciplined, you know, and like I knew he, he hadn't lost a fight for so long. I was like, wow, that's kind of surprising. But at the same time, I guess the environment wasn't too far away from him, really, you know? Yeah, that, that uh, peer pressure. I never was even tempted to do things like that, no matter how hard life gets. I never was tempted to do anything that's going to no. harm me because, I mean, like, it's, I just know it's not going to help. It's a temporary no. fix that no. never ends. Absolutely. No, it, re it really surprised me to hear him get involved in stuff like that, to be honest. Really surprised yeah. He's just got a book come out as well that um, 
I guess he goes into oh, more really? detail about stuff like that. Oh, oh yeah, I think I did hear him talk about that. I had forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Be interesting. Well, uh, changing gears a little bit. Um, who did you like, even though the fight's been postponed now? Who did you like in the Bivol Baturbia? I had I had picked Bivol, but you know, I, I, I uh, it could go either way. But I yeah. Picked Bivol. Man, I was so disappointed that fight got rescheduled. I was so looking forward to that, man, big time. I was like really getting a lot of film studies ready and I was doing a lot of research on these guys. I've actually got a documentary coming out on the channel about D Dimitri Bivol. And I, oh. I too, I too, it's, yeah, it's quite a deep project, but I'm, I'm slowly getting there. But the more I've watched him, the more I'm like, like it was a 50-50 for me. Now I'm like 55-45 Bivol. I just think his his ability to to uh, well, first of all, he hasn't really like even come close to losing. You know, he's never really. I know he's been buzzed a couple of times, but he's always been so disciplined in there. You know, his defensive responsibilities is just off the charts, and that's the whole Russian Soviet style is to be a lot of movement, and then you know the the little subtle things he does on his way out after jabbing with his lead hand and he never gets sucked into too too much of a fight and if he can stay off the ropes against better beer that's the main thing because better beer just lights you up when you're on the ropes and he just picks you apart and starts to maul you if you don't yeah. you can, and i say if you don't it's a big if <laughs> you got he's a strong guy do you know what i mean at some point he just yeah. imposes his will but i think because bebo's so disciplined and so He's actually low key quite tough as well. You know, there's there was an old fight that I watched against Sullivan Barrera when he was on HBO, and Bivo had a massive lump on his head, and he had a he got accidentally cut in the eye by a headbutt, and he just had this stoic nature about him where he just saw through the fight and actually ended up getting the stoppage. And to me, that was like, and I'm not comparing Be Barrera to be a uh, better beer whatsoever. So he's going to have to go through some shit, I think, to get that win, but. He's got the ability to dig in deep as well. And I think his it will come out the gates, outbox better beer for quite a bit. And he just never he's quite hard to nail B ball, you know. He's quite hard to 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 get to you know to to really get good shots on. But better beer, look, he's knocked everybody out. He bullies people, he wears them down psychologically. He's a lot trickier and smarter and better boxer than people probably realize. Yeah. And it, it's just a great fight, bro. It's a great fight, you know. Yeah, it, it's a it's a great matchup, and uh, you know, Bivol has like what over three hundred amateur fights. So I'm like, man, there's probably not a style that he is insane. I mean, for him to just dominate Canelo like that, I mean, true. Wow. Yeah, I know. That's a very good. Point. Same for Better Beer, though. He's probably got hundreds of fights too. You yeah, know, seen a lot of Bivol yeah. in his time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how many amateur fights Paterbiev has, but I'm sure it's probably somewhere around there. But hundreds, talking about they, they churn out they, hundreds out there, don't they? <laughs> Those Eastern oh, European yeah. fighters, hundreds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's they're, amazing. They're it really is amazing. Yeah. I understand they're going to have someone uh, step in to replace uh uh, Baturbia, I was thinking maybe they should just change the whole main event so you know we can still get the Bibble fight down the road. I would I wouldn't try to bring in somebody else in the meantime and you know what if this guy beats Bibble then that fight's off the table. So yeah, um, I, don't so know, I think I'd yeah. What, do you know uh, who they might be having to step in there against Bibble? I heard um, Denzel Bentley being named, who's a British light, uh, light heavyweight. He actually fought uh, Janet. Oh, is it Janet Beck? No, that, well, maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe it can't be Bentley because he's a middleweight. Um, I'm, uh, there's a British fighter that popped up that, you know, sounded domestic level. And I was like, okay, if you're going to, because you are jeopardizing, no matter what happens, you know, you are jeopardizing that fight. But at the same time, if you are Bivol, the training camp he's probably going through, like, what do they do? Because they, what do they just sit around and wait again, even though there's no guarantee that that fight actually even happens if better be ever breaking down as he is. You know, you've got to get active at some point. So I don't know. I think if you bring in a domestic level fighter, Bevo is supposed to be, 
you know, I think it's probably okay. But I think they'll have to be quite wise with the matchmaking as well because you don't want to make it too much of a mismatch either, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, and if the, this guy's on a domestic level, can they still sell that as the main event? You know, that's yeah. what I'm trying to <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, I mean, I think, to be honest, that card is so stacked I don't think it will hurt so much, you know. I think obviously it's a devastating for the car because that is a major fight. That's the best fight on there. But they've got some names on there, you know. It's not. It's not like it's the only name on there, and there's nobody else fighting. I think that would be a bit different if it was that. But that card can be carry itself because of um, what Hergovic and Dubois and um, Hamza Shiraz is on there, and um, who else is on there? Oh yeah, Wilder Zhang and then uh, Ford and um, Ball, Nick Ball and Raymond Ford, and there's another fight too. Uh, Shaq Ann Peters is the is the fighter that I'm thinking of that I heard being replaced. He he actually um, so Craig Richards, who's on that card, who lost to Bivol, I think he beat Shaq Ann Peters. So he's at that sort of British domestic level, which I guess is. Mm, I don't know if it's it's a, a probably a one sided beat down from before I'd imagine, but it keeps him busy though, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, <laughs> did, did you catch the uh, the little trailer? I thought it was pretty epic uh, with Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn. It was like a, a movie trailer. I was like, why are they really going to market these fights? Did you catch that? I haven't seen that one yet. I know they've been doing them for every Saudi card. You know the Ngannou fights. They just have that. It's like a. It's just the top level theater dra dramatic like they must have spent so much money on it but i haven't seen that one yet what was it what's it like it's good yeah it, it, it kind of had a um i don't know kind of like a martial arts feel to it and kind of like a james bond type mm. of feel like eddie hearn looks like the next james bond <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's just these little quick action scenes and they got a little storyline that goes with it I actually like this trailer better than the uh, the Day of Reckoning one with all the zombies and stuff. I actually prefer this one. But, uh, yeah, I've got to check it out. I've got to check it out. I'm sure Eddie Hearn will probably get an, another ego boost from his James Bond-like character role. You know, he loves all that stuff. It's funny how yeah, him and Frank Warren were like bitter rivals, and now the money's there. They're they're okay all of a sudden. You know? Yeah, man. That's what that's what I. <laughs> Yeah, now money brings people to the table. Oh, shout out to Sports Predictions 101. Thanks for coming through. Appreciate you. Go subscribe to Sports Predictions 101. Great channel. Knows his stuff, too. Mm. And, um, yeah, but uh, back to that Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren thing, where they're sitting at the table in the trailer, he said they actually took six hours to film that. So oh they were sitting at that table for six hours just to get it right. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Those two together, I'm sure, really, let's be honest, don't probably have that much in common outside of money. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah, I doubt it too. Yeah. That's funny, man. That's funny. I'll, I'll check it out after after this um this live stream. Yeah, man, I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, uh, what do, who do you got in uh, Zang uh, versus Deontay? I, I got Zang, but I do you know what? Win, win, but. Me too. Me too. I, I, to me, it's like it's 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 quite a weird fight because you know while Wilder, I think he, look, I think he's that performance he put in against Parker. I mean, he looked dreadful. Let's be honest. His his coordination looks shot to pieces. It's just a desire. I think he's he's getting money now. I know he's been doing his like uh, uh, South American like uh, drinking of the uh, that ayahuasca or whatever it is <laughs> that, yeah. spiritual, that spiritual tripping he's been doing which can't be helpful for him so i think he's probably just looking at getting a bag now and like to 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 re-up and i don't know man he just his his coordination looked all over the place but at the same time you know i pre the pre uh parker fight i was like wilder's only really got to land that right hand it was just parker who was able to neutralize it by coming in and tucking under nicely parker fought a great fight to be honest with you, you know, yeah, so yeah. really, I think Wilder, you know, they could both land on each other so quickly. You know, Zhang's got sneaky, sharp power as well. I mean, I don't know. It's yeah. uh, probably would favor Zhang, to be honest with you, like after just watching Wilder, because even though he fought Hellenius and he did knock him out, he wasn't looking. He looked like a very uncomfortable kind of just he was doing a lot of lateral movement, but his coordination isn't the best. So but again, it can just turn a fight around in one shot. You know, Wilder's right hand is so 
devastating that if he yeah. can't Zhang with anything like that, you know, it just depends. I think tactically he'd have to try to take Zhang into deep waters in terms of, you know, maybe get the fight late. Zhang ties out a little bit. Maybe he can get some openings, but I don't know. It's a weird fight to predict because I, I, I don't know when Wilder fought a Southpaw either. Do you know? That's that's the thing, yeah. Southpaw that can punch. Uh, Bruce Gass says that Wilder is predicted to fight uh, Jared Anderson if he beats Zhang. If Zane mm-hmm. wins, yeah. Um, I heard. Uh, shout out to Counterpunch Boxing News. He did a, a video about uh, uh, Shelly Finkel was saying that they're not really thinking about Anderson. They're just focused on Zane. But you know, Prince Turkey's trying to hurry these fights along. So I don't well, know. I was gonna if say. I was about to say he's not thinking about the Anderson fight until Big Turk comes in and says, "Well, how much? How much? How, do you, how much? This, how much you want for this guy?" And they're like, "Okay." That's what it's all about, really, and and that's what gets the fights over the line. It's it's fighters are willing to do it for millions, and I you know I think it's great for the sport in terms of the fighters getting paid, and us getting the fights that we probably wouldn't get without Big Turk because the fight there's not enough money there. But I think right, it's right. I think it's you know it's a it's a dangerous fight for Wilder to be honest against Anderson. Um, I think he's a quite a, a very talented young man, although. You know, he, he puts himself in the firing line, too. So if Wilder's got anything left in that right hand, it's another mm-hmm. interesting one, you know? Yeah, like, um, I know one thing. Zane can't come in again at 291. That was just way too heavy. I, yeah. I mean, that's way too heavy. I mean, he could hardly he, throw he, he looked punchy as well, didn't he? Zane looked really out of shape and, like, yeah. just too flabby for me. You know, like he's getting on, but I, I don't like seeing that in a uh, in a big fire, really. Yeah, two ninety one. At, 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 I know he's six six, but that's still like I just don't understand. You already can punch, so you don't really need that much weight to assist in your punch. I mean, he could come in at two fifty and be just as powerful. He doesn't need to be two ninety one. That's do you think it was? Um, do you think it was just a lack of discipline outside the ring? Yeah, I think I think his diet is a bit questionable. He said he changed it, and he said that's what was fatiguing him, like the stuff he was eating. But I don't know. I, I see him like boiling eggs and eating sandwiches, but I don't know what else he's putting on those sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looked like he's just like he's getting to that age where he's been in he's been in boxing a very long time. He's had some couple of good wins. He's trying to earn a bit of money, and it's like. You know, you just at that age, you, you, if you're not in the gym all the time, and you're not taking care of your diet and stuff like that, you can probably put on the pounds quite quickly. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's got to he's got to stay in the gym even when he doesn't have a fight schedule. Because uh, that exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, back in the days, like when I go back and watch old fights with like Tim Witherspoon back then, if a guy came in at two thirty five, they're like, "Oh man, he's overweight." I'm like, what would they say nowadays? <laughs> Yeah, dramatic change, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. So diligent back then, weren't they? So diligent. Yeah, and then, like I've said this a couple times, too, on some of my videos, when I go back and watch the fights from the 80s and 90s, like Ray Mercer, David Tua, the punches are so much faster. I'm like, is this sped up? It's like, yeah, yeah. It, they're just throwing a lot, like Tommy Morris and Razor Ruddick. I'm like, their punches just look faster. I'm like, yeah, wow. That's Point actually, no, no, you mentioned that. It's yeah. a good point. It just does seem like it's slowed down quite a bit. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, the heavyweights are so big now that it's like we got the NBA now in, in the uh, in the boxing ring, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like Funny. I don't know, man. But uh, what are, what are some of the fights uh, that you're looking forward to or that you want to happen? Well. Obviously, uh, well, the better BFB, well, we talked about that. Obviously, the, the yeah. Fury Usyk one is next week, which I guess we can talk about. In terms of other potential matchups, I'd love to see Crawford and Boots, to be honest. You know, that, right. uh, uh, and then there's a couple of fights at 140, uh, Subriel Matias and maybe Teofimo Lopez or I guess Ryan Garcia. I don't, it, whatever's happening with him and Devin is a bit of a mess right now. It's hard yeah. to to even understand what the hell was going on with all that. But yeah. so Garcia and Tio as well is a pretty decent fight. But Sibriel Matia, I want to see who the king at 140 is. And I'd love to see Boot Tennis in some big fights as well. And um, I don't know, man. I feel like there's so many good fights to be made right now. 
and uh, I think boxing's looking pretty good this this year. You know, how about yeah. you? Yeah, I'm. I'm just hearing uh, recently, like yesterday, that Prince Turkey's trying to get Crawford and uh, Canelo in the ring. I'm like, oh man, I, I'll pay to see that one. Yeah, I will pay to see Crawford Canelo. <laughs> yeah, right, definitely. I think. I think that's probably what Crawford wants. A couple of fights left, maybe trying to get undisputed at 154, and then get a massive payday, and then get out of the sport. You know, because the the Canelo payday with him that'd be a mega payday, and then. You know, he just tested himself to, 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 to dare to be great, basically. And that's what we want in the sport. It's like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to see him go up higher than that, though. <laughs> you know, yeah, there comes no, a time no. where boxers have to draw the line on the weight because it gets just a bit, a bit, a bit too much. But I was watching a, an interview on um, Nazim Richardson the other day, and he was talking about going up in weight. And fighters like Crawford, like Floyd and stuff like that, where they just have so much skill. The, you know they can diffuse the size of a man and just you know apply their their skill set accordingly, which are, are always, there is a limit. But you know Canelo is probably that limit. But yeah, yeah. it's an interesting fight. I definitely would love to see that. See how Crawford deals with him. You know, I actually favor Crawford in that fight. Um, yeah. I think um, Crawford's walking around at like 180. Like I just saw him at the press conference for the fight he has coming up in Los Angeles and. He was bigger than the I forget the guy's name, but he was he was bigger than this guy. And I'm seeing videos where he's like wrestling heavyweights and yeah. slamming people. I'm like, wow, this dude is he's got like that natural strength. Yeah, uh, that, that rest he definitely has that wrestling background too. That that physical low key like I've seen him do the benches of like what well, he bench presses a crazy amount. For, yeah, for, he's really strong. No, he is, and then. You know, you had his skill set and his his IQ and his timing and all that. I think he'd probably keep away from Canelo. It'd be a it'd be a fascinating fight oh, because yeah. Canelo would probably do what he normally does and try to walk him down. And Canelo's lateral movement is not the best. It's probably a a weaker part of his game, I'd say. So Crawford could, you know, find some success with that. But I don't know. Yeah. They'd have to. They'd have to exchange at some point you'd think you know that's when it would be it would get interesting how can he ta how can he take canelo's you know shots even if they're on the arm and stuff like that you know canelo likes to light up the arm <laughs> yeah, get your guard down yeah, that's some good points uh sports predictions 101 says undisputed at 154 will be the chopping point for bud he shouldn't even try to go to one uh what's that 168 at all i mean i would support him but i can't see him beating canelo at 168 so yeah a lot of people think uh that uh you know crawford should you know stop at some point not you know go definitely not go to cruiserweight you know? no <laughs> <laughs> well let's Although, get 200 million if he's getting 200 million he might do it you know yeah yeah you give him two yeah he'll probably go just, no, you don't want to do that really but uh, obviously every fire has a, a limit where it's like that's crazy no. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you're familiar with the heavyweight from California, uh, Olympian uh, Richard Torres Jr. But he was talking yeah. about. Yeah, he was talking about Crawford would put him in a headlock or pin him, and he couldn't do anything. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a strong guy too. Like, I don't know, like it's that's why technique and like skill was so so important. You know, when like you know you have that crazy weird wrestling skill. That Crawford does and his clinch game as well is off the charts. You know he's a he's yeah. just an amazing fighter, but that's an interesting story to hear <laughs> him at headlock yeah. three weights. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. I mean, when when I saw him in the ring against Errol Spence, I thought he looked like the physically bigger guy in the ring. Like everybody talking about Errol Spence was bigger. I was like, doesn't look like it. I, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, he pushed it back in like the first or second round. He just shoved him off him, and Spence kind of went flying back a little bit. And I was like, yeah. "Wow!" <laughs> yeah, Showbiz the adult was at the fight, and he said, "When when that shove happened, he said the whole crowd was like, oh, it's over.' Like, like oh, Errol's done. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's a that was a big question mark, wasn't it, going into that fight? Is that what? Where's the physical strength going to come in, and it, will Errol be able to bully him? And that got that got answered pretty quickly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. 
that that fight, man. Um, oh, uh, what sports prediction says they say Bud's a good wrestler too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tony's reviews in the building. Shout out to you, Tony. Go subscribe to Tony's reviews. We uh we go in there and chop it up too. So shout out to y'all for tuning in. Mm. He's talking a little uh Bud and Errol Spence. Let me ask you, um, who what do you think is next for uh, Errol Spence? What should he do? I understand him and Derek James are, you know, having some financial disputes. So what do you think is next for uh Errol Spence? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's really sad to hear that, isn't it? When they, you know, they were together for so long and then like, you know, it's always something money comes up and they have a fallout. It is sad to hear that. But in terms of like, I, I, honestly, it's really, you would be, it's, it's a question mark to, to see where he is after A, he took, you know, a, a pretty massive beating really. So you've got the psychological yeah. damage of that. Then you've got obviously, you know, he had a major accident. I don't know if you ever get rid of psychological damage from that you know although you know i know he had some eye issues too like i just i don't know i don't know i, I wish him well i hope like maybe he can get a, a last money fight or something maybe like that's probably why he was trying to home in on fondora you know that was like a a, a, a kind of a backdoor way in really to get a world title and then maybe keep the belt and then you know have some fights in texas as a champ i don't know but yeah it will, I guess we probably won't know until we see him back in the ring to see how, you know, his his um health is really. There's a lot of, still a lot of question marks, you know. There has to be because of the last time we saw him, he, you know, he's getting beaten up. And I know that was largely down to Bud, but you wonder how how he is just mentally after that. You know, he sounds okay. And he's just, I just, I don't know. I, 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 only Only he will know. And, you know, I guess we will find out if he does have another fight and it's, he starts taking some shots or whatever, how he sounds and feels. But at the end of the day, it does get dangerous for fighters at this, this end of the career, you know, when they have to get, you know, they've been, they've been fighting for so long. You know, even, even training camps are, are a toll. They take a toll on your body. You know, you still have to spar a lot. You're still getting punched in the face. You're still doing the grueling running and, you know, I know he was in the, in the mountains. I saw him the other day, actually. Um, I don't know where it was, but he was on high altitude, you know, putting the road work in. So, But he's an animal, you know. So sometimes fighters like that are too brave for their own good. You know, maybe he's one of them. Yeah, man. Um, I know, like, uh, I see fighters nowadays have longer training camps. And I remember Lennox Lewis's training camps would be like eight weeks tops yeah. or yeah a week now these guys go like 12 and 13 weeks so sometimes apparently, yeah, apparently errol spence doesn't do that because uh i don't know the rumor there's a rumor that he was high in the <laughs> ring get his eyes in that ring before the cross i, I saw that guy around too like you know because he i mean he, to be honest he has this kind of a like uh lazy kind of look about him anyway you know but i i don't i, I can't imagine that would have really helped him in a fight smoking weed before yeah. <laughs> maybe he was i don't know that would be a terrible thing to do right before you're fighting the best fighter in the world but yeah i don't know if yeah. it would to that but hopefully for his sake he wasn't high <laughs> do you know what i mean yeah I, I was thinking the same thing like if he was like what was he thinking i know terence crawford had put a tweet to him before the fight about like we know what you're doing like clean yourself up so he was kind of alluding to some uh some substance issues but uh yeah know, man I mean, he definitely you know he's been in clubs and stuff and like drinking a little bit and ballooning up in weight and showing up drunk at press conferences so maybe they're talking about that but you know oh, yeah. i don't know i don't know bro all right well uh hey if you guys if uh errol you're looking for a trainer right here boxing on the edge <laughs> <laughs> you gotta come to New York, though, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, yeah. funny, he's uh, he's actually, I think he's born in Long Island. I think he might oh, have his family out here because he's definitely born out here, and then I know they moved to Texas when he was young. But wow. you know, I, I, mean, I saw him in the gyms actually at Gleason's when he was coming up, like just hitting the bag, you know, just whacking the oh. bag. You know, he fought. Uh, uh, my old trainer had a fighter called Emmanuel Lati. And they fought Errol Spence when Errol Spence was coming up when he was like eight, eight and oh, nine and oh, something like that. Larty actually cracked him with a, a right hook and buzzed him. It was one of the oh, wow. one of the only <laughs> fights where Spence prior to the Ugas fight was actually visibly buzzed. And um ended up winning that Spence ended up winning that fight. But that was um a little yeah. bit 
uh, interest in history there from my old trainer. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah there's a there's a lot of uh, wars that go on behind closed doors that uh, I know back in the day you weren't supposed to say what happened in sparring, but now people are leaking footage and. You know, now it's just now it just, the times have changed so much, bro. Everybody like airing out everyone's DMs and putting sparring for a job. It's not like a, something I've ever ever like. That's I know you, me, and you probably grew up in the same mentality where it's like that's you don't air out anyone's DMs, let alone a friend that you thought was was reaching out to you and just air it out to the world. To me, that is yeah. just wrong. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would never do that. For one, you're, it's going to be hard to find sparring after that because someone's going to say, well, if I have a bad day, you're going to put the footage out. So I'll, That's I'll the thing, it. it ends up shooting them in the foot because it's such yeah. a simple move. It's like it's actually going to hurt you in the long run because, A, no one's going to even want to DM you anymore because they know that they're right. going to get their DMs aired out. And, B, you're not going to get the sparring because, it, like you said, the footage might get leaked. It's just weird. Right. The whole leaking yeah. sparring is weird. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the reasons <clears throat> that I never really uh, took to Devin Haney because I saw some footage where he was sparring and he was just like cussing at the guy, insulting him. I was like, he was mm. going in on him. I'm like, dude, he's trying to help you get better. And you're just like, yeah. he was just going way yeah. too much. It's a shame when you hear stories like you never know like the full story, but I I haven't seen that. You know who he was sparring with or when that was? Uh, it was, this was probably like two years ago. I'm not sure when the footage was taken. It might have been way early in his career, and I, I don't remember the guy's name, but Devin mm. was just like verbally beating him worse than he was doing in the ring. I was like, man, come on, man. Well, the one the one thing I'll say on that is like with sparring, I'm, I'm sure you know this too, is like you don't always get the full story, right? Being that like – that guy could have could have done something to him before that and offended him or insulted him or talked some shit about him. That, whatever. You never really know. And that's why, like, you know, even even today, I see a lot of sparring in the gym and some guys are getting ready and they'll get they'll have like five, five fresh guys in a row come in and they have to stay in. And then, like, you know, if you were to catch that sparring session on the fifth round and you think, wow, this guy's getting touched up a little bit, little but little do you know he's had five rounds of just fresh fighters coming in in it on him and he's got to deal with this and then you might see you might get that clip from the sixth round and you think oh he's getting pieced up <laughs> but yeah it could be something like that too where you know like i said the guy might have been talking shit to him but i don't know it's yeah it, it can get sparring can get wild you know especially yeah. in american gyms like it's not so uh bad as in the uk from what i hear but it's more violent in america oh really I'm, yeah. Why do, you, why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, there's a channel that um, I love. Hat Man Strikes Back. He's an original. Oh, OG, yeah. OG, yeah. Okay. Great channel. He's, uh, you know, I've learned a lot from him. And he was the one telling me he used to box in, in the UK, too. And he, I heard it from him. So I don't know why that is. But I couldn't, I couldn't begin to tell you because I haven't ever been in the gym in the UK, to be honest. I, I learned all my my trade in america so all i knew was rough sparring yeah <laughs> reasons bro oh my god i used to get my ass kicked but that's all i knew i just thought that was the norm you know so i was surprised yeah. to hear that that you, people took it light over there or lighter i i have a theory on why that is i think because americans talk too much they're always like ah, bragging and i'm gonna do this and your mother this and i'm gonna beat you like, like, <laughs> yeah so. there might be some there might be some you know british people are quite reserved by nature you know and uh, yeah. i don't want to say more respectful because i know plenty of americans that are really respectful but it could be yeah. it could be down to just the the, the nature of the country's uh, reservedness, you know, it just might trickle over into that. Americans are a bit more out there like that. And, you know, you get a lot of uh, ego and testosterone flying around in the gym and you get a, a shot that might land somewhere a little harder than you didn't want it to. And then all of a sudden you get the ego kick in. I remember I was sparring this dude back in the day and uh, I hadn't sparred for a couple of years. I, I, I stopped fighting for a bit and I wasn't really training. I got back in there. And he was cool. We'd sparred for a long time before that. And I went back in there and I just let my hand go, right? Real fast, hard body shot. It didn't really mean to throw it that hard. And it hit him quite hard. And it pissed him off, bro. And he came back and he broke my ribs. <laughs> oh, wow. 
because he'd been training <laughs> two years and he was a little bit bigger than me and he, he pissed him off so much it turned him right. and he just really started to like load up on me and i went to throw a left hook and he threw a right hand to the, my stomach and it, i felt my rib crack i was like oh my god i probably deserve that <laughs> but it can get wild in a minute you know you just you let the wrong punch go at the wrong time and and like i said ego kicked in so, wow stories to tell yeah <laughs> still broken yeah. now you can't fix a broken yeah. rib bro, you know yeah did it mess did it mess with your your uh breathing at all? yeah yeah i couldn't talk i could not talk i had to finish i finished the round luckily there's only about 30 seconds left and then i got out the ring and i, I was trying to explain what happened and i couldn't actually talk i was like <laughs> <laughs> seeing all sorts of oh, trouble oh yeah man it's definitely uh a pain sport. I mean, just hearing your story made me think. I, I've seen that in the gym too. It was a heavyweight box and a middleweight, and mm. uh, the middleweight, I guess, uh, cracked him with something, and he was like, "Okay, now if you hit me like that, I'm, I'm gonna go all out too." And it got pretty nasty. Yeah, they had to just get out the ring because it's. Well, that's the thing is that when it starts to explode like that, sorry to sorry to cut you off, bro. When it explodes like that, it goes in one direction because people are so amped up. This boxing, you can literally legally put your hands on someone. So when the talk that happens like that, it's not going to get chilled out unless there's a good trainer in there to be like, guys, calm down. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. It got ugly. They had to both get out the ring. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's true. But it gets yeah, it get yeah. get get weird really quickly, you know. I've seen some very violent sparring sessions over my years. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember I was at the gym once. Uh, shout out to my old trainer Billy Moore, uh, son of the great Archie Moore. He was my trainer, and uh, there was oh, a heavyweight. That's all. I said that he he was your trainer. Yeah, Billy Moore. Uh, he's the son of Archie Moore in San Diego. Wow, that's awesome, man. You must have learned loads of stuff from him. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. The problem was, though, back then, I don't know if he's still doing it. He was doing a lot of missionary work. So he'd be like going to Africa and stuff. So Mm. I was I ended up linking up with this other guy because he was traveling so much. But he's a real cool, real nice guy, man. Yeah, he did teach me some. He used to box himself. He didn't have the career that his dad had, but uh, he knew a lot. Yeah. uh, I remember I was in the gym once and there was this, I, I think his name was Mika. He was a big Samoan guy. And mm. uh, there's a heavyweight that came in, got off of work, took his clothes off, got in the ring and got knocked out in like two minutes. I was like, wow. Dude. <laughs> like all he did was take his clothes off, get in the ring, got knocked out and went back home. I was like, wow, that was quick. <laughs> well, we never came back after that, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I never saw the guy again. I was like, man, dude, that was I've seen sad. those stories too. I've seen, you know, dudes come in and they're you know, acting all tough and then they want to spar and then they get their ass kicked and you never yeah. see them. You never see them again. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, the first guy I sparred, his name was uh, Alex something. Uh, he was from the UK and he was like, he was like six, 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 seven. He was like 10 pounds heavier than me. And uh, I was just watching him. I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to go in there and jab this guy. Man, he must have put a clinic on me. That dude was jabbing my head off. And I was like, man. <laughs> and he's the only guy I've ever sparred that, like, I couldn't move him. And he couldn't move me either, though. But, yeah. like, I would literally try to move him. He wasn't budging. I was like, man, this dude is strong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because you, you, it's like punching someone with a really good chin at some point you're just not going to knock them out you know there's pro trainers that have said that about fighters they're like stop trying to knock him out and like when you feel a physically strong guy like don't try because you're going to you're going to exert so much energy trying to be the strong man as well you know yeah it's yeah yeah Yeah, man and um i remember he hit me with a body shot right before the uh that was my first time sparring you me like in the sternum and like knocked the air out of me, and I'm trying to play it off like it didn't hurt. I'm in the bell rung. I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the key, though, isn't it? Trying to play it off and do the yeah. the poker face is a big part of it, and that's um yeah. that takes a lot to do that because you you you're hurt, but you don't want to show you're hurt. It's a big yeah. design. I remember back in the day when I was sparring, like I used to spar a lot of fighters that were open fighters, which is more than 10 fights for anyone that is listening. You know that it's like uh, slightly more experienced. I was a bit more novice and he was like, 
he he hurt me a few times. He's like, bro, you need to really conceal your your um when uh, when you get hurt, you know, stop showing it so much. <laughs> and I was like, what are you gonna do? You hurt me, bro. Like, it, but it's a skill that you learn over time. When you get hurt, you're supposed to just be like, oh, that didn't hurt. Let's just yeah, keep poker going. Face. Yeah, it's not easy to do straight away as a novice, you know. But you do learn eventually how to conceal your pain, and you know those guys taught me a lot. That's one of the problems I had with the movie Creed too. Is every time like a uh, Drago's son would hurt Donnie, he'd be on the ground like ah, like dude, who does that? Like he's screaming and like in a fetal position. I'm like, dude. yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I I can't remember that bit, but I, I I I can imagine that's just not boxing at all. Doing it like that, showing yeah. how you are, you know. Yeah, he's like oh, and screaming. Like I know it's for dramatic effect because it's a movie, but I mean, like come on, man, it's like. The audience is too sophisticated now for all that. Like, <laughs> I'm not. But uh, uh, what was I going to ask you about? Um, well, speaking of movies, what 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 are some of your favorite uh, boxing films of all time? Um, you know, honestly, like I quite liked Cinderella Man. I know that wasn't like a oh, yeah. sort of film. I, I was quite quite enjoyed Russell Crowe as an actor back in the day. You know, I quite. Yeah. Enjoyed the realism of that. I thought this, the fight scenes were pretty cool. It was based off a true story. It was uh, James J. Braddock, you know, how he beat Max Bear back in the 30s. And it was like, you know, the depiction of America and the Great Depression and stuff like that. I enjoyed that. I, for, you know, I think Raging Bull was up there for a big, yeah. but for me, like, I think Rocky won, probably. Oh yeah, definitely. Rocky, yeah, the whole Rocky ones really. Rocky Four, but Rocky One, I really enjoyed just just the the laying the foundations and the story. Um, I'm trying to think of now. Obviously, just you know, I I generally like any boxing movie to be honest with you, but I I yeah. think Cinderella Man was probably up there for me. How about you? Yeah, yeah you know, I'm a I'm a Rocky and Creed guy. You know, I. <laughs> I just think the fights in the rock, other than the bad defense in the Rocky movies, I always thought the fights looked more real than the other movies. I thought yeah. other movies I agree. Were too choreographed. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Like, I didn't, they I didn't like Ali. They got they Wood in and uh, Bellew and stuff, you know, they got real fighters in. Yeah, yeah, Tony Bellew. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. I'm trying to think about the movies that, like, I know there's probably one or two I've forgotten about. There was actually one, um, I haven't seen it for a long time. It was actually with Daniel Day-Lewis, who's an amazing actor. It's called The Boxer. And I think it yeah, was... Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I haven't seen it. But I know the movie you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it in its entirety. I think I've saw a little bit of it. I think it was quite highly acclaimed back in the day. But I think it's yeah. quite there's quite, quite a political undertone to it as well back in Northern Ireland, I think it was. But I'd have to give that a watch over just because Daniel Day-Lewis is an amazing actor. You know, wherever he's in is usually just watching him is a pretty special experience anyway, you know. Oh, did you ever, speaking of great actors, did you ever see Denzel in The Hurricane? That was a good movie. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that was um that that was based off a true story, wasn't it? That was um yeah. Ruben the Hurricane Carter. Right. It was yeah, I haven't seen that for a while. I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. always enjoyed Denzel. Uh I liked Mark Wahlberg where he played uh Yeah. Was it? The fighter. Lord? Fighter. Yeah, the fighter, right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's one I forgot about actually. That was good. That was really yeah. good. And I like that because they, they have they brought in the whole like HBO crew. They made the fights yeah. very realistic. And Mark Wahlberg looked like he had a little bit of technique as well. And then um, who was it? Christian Bale. God, he was great in that, wasn't he? <laughs> oh yeah, that 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 movie was. Uh, and I forget about it. That, that was a great movie. Yeah, that's definitely one that snuck past my radar. But yeah, I enjoyed that. That was good quality film. Yeah, man. Um, Mark Wahlberg is. Uh, he's a. Uh, Staying in shape, and um, what was I? I was about to ask you something, and it slipped my mind about. Uh, oh, I was gonna say when you were talking about the HBO uh, telecast being in that movie, I was gonna say, I don't know how you feel about the DAZN uh, announcing, but I'm not too big on it. I miss the days of Merchant Lampley and George Foreman. Like, yeah. Like, uh, who who are your some of, I like Al Bernstein like who are some of your favorite commentators coming up and like what do you think is missing now like 
we have these big fights and the, the mega events, but the, the commentating Mediocr the mediocrity is what what you get with the, the the current broadcasters for the most part. There's one or two. I quite like Gabe Rosado these days at the zone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Daniel Stewart with Jim Lampley, Max Kellerman, oh, you know, yeah. I know like he he had a divided opinion, but he filled in the gaps nicely. You know, he had a good boxing knowledge. And then, you know, you had Emmanuel Stewart, Roy, Roy Jones, right. uh, Andre Wolf times, you know, I, I kind of miss him. I think, um, yeah, the, the zone commentary, like it's not great, is it? <laughs> Let's be <Yeah>. honest. <laughs> the UK yeah. one is worse, I think. And there's just like, they're just bland. <laughs> Bland and mediocre, just there's no charisma. You know, when they took yeah. Kalinagi out of Showtime, you know, what, like and they, he, he was really good. And then, like, you know, no disrespect to any of the other guys, you know what I mean? It's not, not, not nothing against them, but they just lack yeah. that bit of like that little gem that gets dropped where you're like, oh, wow, yeah, okay, I never thought of it like that. And, and those, those commentators used to drop the right thing just the right time. And it was like, yeah. oh, Mesmerized. I used to learn so much from listening to the commentary. Actually, yeah, back okay. at, first really got into boxing heavily was early, like late 2000, 2009, 2008, 2009. And then I was watching HBO a lot and I just used to listen to Emmanuel Stewart and I would learn so much about the sport from him. And, and I feel like um, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> you know, there's no. Oh, yeah. Guys, that well, um, there's not none, obviously, but not as much, you know. Yeah, Emmanuel Stewart, man, such a classy guy. Uh, me and yeah. my mother were at the uh, Lennox Lewis Oliver McCall rematch in Vegas, oh. 1997, oh. and he's coming out the dressing room before the fight, and you know, me and my mom wave at him. He comes over and like hugs my mom. He didn't even know us. Like classy <laughs> guy, dude. Like he's not even. He wasn't even tense before the fight. Like, oh, we gotta focus. He's like, oh, hey, he comes over and hugs. I was like, wow, man, this dude, is, he's cool, man. Yeah, I've always <laughs> liked his vibe. I've always I've always loved, I watch, listen to a lot of his interviews. You know, I try to home in on the teachers and the real pillars of the sport of teaching, you know, like him, like Virgil Hunt and Nazim Richardson. Those are the ones that I grew up really focusing because they were around when I was just starting to get into it and wanted to learn a bit deeper about the the... Well, philosophy, really. You know, they're very philosophical guys, and um, yeah. just much knowledge and education. There, and you know, they it's missing today in the sport. You know, actually, Breadman, yeah. Breadman, Caleb Plant's trainer, he'll yeah. pop up a few shows on. I think it might be ESPN, or he's done some random shows where I'm like, I like, I like listening to him because he has a little bit of that a younger yeah, version like teachers. Yeah. You know. I like him, Andy Lee. Um, I'm big on Andy. Ben Davidson, Bo Mack. Yep, yeah, great points. Yeah, good points. There's um, there's a few you wrote. Ben Davidson for sure. He's very underrated as a trainer. I think he's slowly I getting. Love ben Davidson, man. But yeah, he's good, man. He really is. What, what do you think about this um, Usyk fight? Then I'd love to get your opinions. I know your your zeitgeist for the heavyweight boxing is is always. Yeah. But it's all, it always gets me thinking, bro. When I watch your channel, I'm like, I never thought of it like that. What, what are your thoughts <laughs> on, on this Usyk Fury fight? Well, uh, yeah, I appreciate that, man. Um, I, at first, I was saying Fury, but when I saw Fury seemed to be doing everything in his power not to fight Usyk, I was like, <laughs> okay, he knows something I don't know. I'm That's like, what it's yeah. right. well put, bro. It's exactly what it is, isn't it? Doing everything he can't, so he can't fight him. Yeah, it's like when I see a guy kind of being elusive, I'm like, okay, you know something. And I heard Fury say one of his hardest fights was against a guy like Usyk's side. So I'm like, I think Usyk will win, but I I know he's going to be having a hard time to win because they really want Fury Joshua. So I'm hoping yeah. there's no crazy decisions, but I think if it's legitimate, I, I think Usyk by uh, probably like a split decision. Mm. Yeah, I, I've been. Picking yeah, I've been picking Usyk for a while for just like the the build up to this for Tyson Fury, just his outside the ring, you know, um, just discipline. I guess you know we'll catch up a little bit. His his mental arithmetics before the fight is just a bit out of character. He doesn't like. I I just I think there's 
I'm going to do actually a keys to victory video on, I think, Monday when I watch a little bit more footage about these two and just see if I can sum up. I watched the Wallin fight, Fury Wallin, and he was having a lot of difficulty with landing his right hand um, a little bit. And, you know, I just think he's not going to be able to time Usyk. Usyk's going to be so slippery and in front of him. And he's going to, he might, I watched a, interview with duke mckenzie who's a, a british uh, former world champion actually three weight division world champion and he had an interesting breakdown how uh, he was saying Usyk was gonna basically back fury up or he wasn't gonna fall for the feints and the, the little games that fury does uh, he's too smart for stuff like that and he said he was gonna walk fury down and try and get him out probably fancied a stoppage in the middle to late rounds and it got me thinking you know i was like yeah he made some interesting points but i definitely have Usyk winning that um but you can't write off Tyson Fury because he's such a, he's so, like, I don't know. He can just show up and put an amazing. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so surprised if he showed up and put an amazing performance in either. You know, I, I just maybe he's a little past it now to do that, but he has got that in him. You know, when he rises to the occasion, he's got one hell of a will, one hell of a heart, and you know, he's an awkward guy as well. But. I don't know. It's a really interesting fight. It's got my fascination up a bit more now. It's getting closer in. I haven't really made too many videos about it lately, but now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, this is actually a really fascinating fight. Yeah, you know? you, that, that's a that's an interesting take you have. And um, what the thing you made me think of is I saw a quick clip on Instagram where they were asking uh, the Turby of about Usyk, and he said. He can definitely be hurt to the body, but he said he didn't recommend Fury tried it too often, like like Usyk might be waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, and also another thing is like, you know, I don't think Fury's particularly a prolific body puncher, you know? I'm not saying yeah, he can't. Not, um, yeah. It's so long and he's so tall up here and he like likes to use that jab and box like that. Committing to the body is a di slightly different style. You really got to commit to it. I can't see. I know he dropped Wilder with a body shot, but... If you look how Wilder was actually boxing that night, I mean, my God, my my man could have probably landed that shot. It was just all over the place. But I can't see Fury really being that successful to the body, if I'm honest. It's, I'm not yeah. saying it can't happen. It's not really, he's, he's it's not really his thing. But I, I've got to watch a bit of footage. Maybe I've missed some stuff. I want to watch the Wallin fight again. And, you know, but, you know, his, his level of competition as well in the last two fights is three fights has been not what you would want to set you up. And then obviously he's ballooning up in weight. He's been in his done. Let's not forget the eye as well. That was a bad eye cut. I wonder how, if that's going to be a factor, if it's going to open back up again, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot to, could happen, you know? Yeah. I've forgotten about the uh, eye issue. Yeah. And, uh, that was a big cut. <laughs> you know? yeah. It was a massive cut. Yeah, I uh, man, I hope yeah, I hope the fight doesn't get stopped on cuts. That'd be really disappointing. Yeah, but, uh, well, I wouldn't be yeah. mad if, if like Usyk really like pieced him up and actually deserved to may, maybe light the eye up where he was hitting it cleanly and outboxing him, and then getting the stoppage like that. So that you know he really, but you know if it was a if it was a weird opening, you know I, I know what you mean, but I think. Yeah. I think I think I don't I don't even know because it's been such a it was such a big talking point and then it just went away, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, like, it's still there, you know? Right. Yeah, I'd forgotten about it myself till you mentioned. It. I was like, oh yeah, the cut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. It was like two months ago. Yeah. I was like, giant cut. And I made a video about this at the time. I was like, well, if he's just gonna rest. Uh, and not and have the eye heal because when you're training you know you 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 can you can agitate cuts absolutely you know anything on your body so your body's working a lot harder so is he going to just stop training because and then re, re up and then he's still going to have a little bit of the cut to deal with is he going to get it like is spa, how's he going to spar is the spa going to be like you know a monitored spa don't hit the eye <laughs> i don't know i'm uh, thinking outside the box too much but i just thought <laughs> preparation wasn't wasn't ideal to to have a training camp when you've got a busted up an eye you know to put your yeah. all in camp yeah what are they gonna spar just body shots that's not gonna really help much. <laughs> i don't know yeah. i don't well then, you know open tire in and then he had to leave the camp there's a lot of rumors surrounding the whether he flawed Fury or it just didn't, the sparring didn't quite work out. But, you know, they, they didn't really, uh, he didn't last too long in that camp, Opatire. So, oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but I just everything, nothing that nothing like that I think about Fury makes me think he's gonna win the fight, other than I know he's got this steel mentality in there and I know he's he's got the capabilities, but it, has he had enough time and has he been messing around outside the ring too much to to be able to to straighten his health out where he's like the best shape he's been in since the Wilder Two fight, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it it makes you wonder. Um, I've seen clips where it looks like he got real thin, and now I see clips where it looks like he might have put some weight back on. So it's, I don't... it's all a bit of a trick in it. It's, uh, I can't tell sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's I'm like, like which, which Fury's going to come? Is it going to be the light? I don't know if he should come in too light. I think maybe 260. I don't, I don't really know about that. I don't know if he should drop the weight or keep the weight is kind of a hard thing to gauge i don't think he should drop too much lower than that i think yeah. well i don't know because like you know he's gonna have to keep up with the the agility and the mobility of your of, of Usyk's foot speed you know he's, he's constantly moving and his lead hand is just doing all this trickery like trying to keep up with that with the foot, the foot speed and the the coordination on that is going to be a key for me i don't i think if he comes in too heavy that should probably in in theory slow that down but yeah. i don't know how much advantage it's going to get from losing more weight either i uh, the heavyweight division to be honest is slightly out of my forte if i'm being totally honest that's why i defer to you bro because i'm like stuff like this with the bigger men i i'm it's a, i'm not out of my depth but i know more about like you know guys my size <laughs> i suppose what, what do you think the way like, uh, what, what division do you like uh zero what's your favorite division i like the i like the welterweights i like 140 i like middleweight light heavyweight you know up, up higher i still enjoy it don't get me wrong but I, i'm more fascinated and i understand those divisions far more and maybe down to lightweight and you know even below that i enjoy watching them but there's a different um physique and a different science behind you know the the, the build-up fighters from age to you know how they move how their feet are so yeah what are your thoughts on fury with that weight do you think he, he, he need, would need to lose weight yeah i think i think he should probably come in i forget the weight he was against dillian white but that was mm. probably one of the best i've seen him i think he should come in whatever weight he was for that fight because he seemed to have lots of energy and yeah i thought he looked i mean dillian you know played a part in that because he looked so terrible but i thought that <laughs> i thought fury looked really <laughs> like he was just in his prime and uh something you said too about um you know about fighters being different you know the heavyweights different than the welterweights emmanuel stewart used to say that uh a lot of heavyweights don't have a lot of heart he, he was saying a lot of these guys they're big and intimidating looking but they're not the you know the most mm. the most mentally strong so interesting like, yeah <laughs> that's an interesting yeah, I point yeah, i wonder why that is because like i i i've not thought of that before yeah i don't know if it's because they're so big they assume like on the streets that someone's going to be intimidated by them because they're so big then they get in the ring yeah. and they see this guy has no fear they're like oh no now what like I don't really know I'm I'm seriously heavy <laughs> shots as well you know <laughs> heavy yeah. heavy shots getting landed i mean that's another thing isn't it getting hit by a heavyweight wow yeah, yeah. Mm. i mean emmanuel stewart was so deep like um <clears throat> he was talking about before the Hearns Hagler fight, he came into the uh, dressing room and one of the trainers was massaging Tommy Hearns' thighs and legs and he screamed at him. He's like, Stop. He said, mm -hmm. That's one reason why Hearns couldn't keep his uh, balance. He said, Because he was this guy was massaging his legs and it was turning them to spaghetti legs. He was relaxing his legs. He's like, You never mm -hmm. massage a fighter's legs before he goes into a fight. I I never heard anything like that. Interesting to me. I'd never heard that either, but you know, that's the kind of wisdom that probably is missing today. Stuff, little stuff like that, because you would think yeah. that's what people would do, you know, massage the legs. You know, all these sports scientists and nutritionists and whatever, they'd probably tell yeah. you to do. But yeah, it's like I listen to him, Stacy McKinley. Stacy said, uh, I forget the guy, trainer that was banned from the sport, but he said he used to use an illegal tactic where. He would put asthma medication. He'd break the tablets open, put it in the water, shake it up, 
and have his fighter drink it, and it would open up their lungs so they wouldn't get tired. And so they found and out about it. They banned him from the Paul Lewis. Was it that what guy? That? Mr. Yeah, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, yeah, Paramount Lewis. That was so bad on the, when he did that against that R Louis Rusto, I think it was, and he blinded that guy. And remember you were seeing that fight? Oh yeah, yeah, wow, that was sad. That was sad because they gave him that. He gave he he said you could see him in the corner. He's like, no, I'm not that bowl. Give me the other bowl, and it had that stuff in it. And he made him like get a triple win, basically. That's so messed up, bro. Yeah, but, it's like how do you even think to do that? Like, how, like <laughs> what kind of mind do you, hey, let me get some asthma, tab. like how would you even know to do that? <laughs> no, it's messed up, bro, but that's messed up. It caused so much drama and like psychological damage from families and the fighters and it's just yeah. bad. That's never good for the, it's just awful, that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, was, um, Panama Lewis, man. Uh, I remember he was in Tony Tucker's camp when uh, Lennox Lewis fought Tony Tucker. He wasn't allowed into the corner, but I guess they let him in the building. But uh, mm. yeah, he was an interesting guy, man. Uh, who, who do you think? Um, well, what what fighter was that uh, that was taking the padding out of his glove, Margarito? Who's that? No, that was he. He Margarito had the cast, the hand wraps, buttoned up. And it like it turned into like a solid, and oh, like he got caught. Nazim Richardson actually caught him. As in, he did, you know, he did it against Koto because, well, there was no rule. He still denied it, I think, but he got caught in the Mosley fight, and Mosley knocked him out. And then you know everybody since then thought that, you know, he did it against Koto. And actually, I was at the rematch when he fought Koto too at the Garden for the redemption. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was amazing. Wow. Yeah, that was an amazing. That was an amazing experience because after that, Sixth Avenue got shut down with just all boxing fans just shouting out Koto, and it was just like a magical because there, there no cars could get through because it was just a bunch of boxing fans. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh. Yeah, it was one of the best uh, boxing nights I think I've ever had. It was amazing. So you've been in uh, you've been in New York for a while, then, right? Fifteen years, bro. Yeah, maybe sixteen years, something like that. Yeah, a long time. Wow. Time, man. So, where, uh, what? So, where were you from originally? I'm from the UK, Surrey, in England. Uh, but I was actually born in America, and um, we moved back. My and then we moved to Germany for a few years, and then I moved back to the UK. I've been kind of everywhere, really. But I was born in the US, in Ohio, <laughs> of all places, and then I uh, grew up in England. And my parents are English, and. Then I moved out back out here. I was on the West Coast in Seattle in 2006, and then I moved to New York in nine. So done quite a bit. Uh, I've always wanted to see New York. I'm a I'm a West Coast guy now. I'm in Atlanta. I can't I, I can't stand Atlanta. Come down. I'll take you to Gleason's. We'll have a little. Um, I'll get you on the oh, path. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. I I enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd bro. Enjoy that. No, definitely. Let me know. But um, I've probably got a shoot, bro. I've got. A, I'm gonna have to get a few bits and bobs done. I've got a few videos I want to get ready and and set up for okay. tomorrow. But okay. I really, I would have to catch us. I'd love to do a part two again sometime. We can go in a little bit yeah. deep on the background. Oh, yeah, man. Any hey, anytime you want to come on, man. Just let me know, man. Y'all yeah. go subscribe to Boxing on the Edge, man. Great platform. Knows his stuff. Like I said. Go follow him on, on Instagram and you won't be disappointed and you'll learn some things too. So, <laughs> hey, man. Appreciate that, bro. Coming through, man. Thank you so much for having me and best of luck with your channel. And then, like I said, we'll do a part two soon. I'll reach out to you on Instagram and we'll, we'll get it going. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it, bro. Oh, man. Like I said, anytime, man. Have a good rest of your day. Likewise, mate. Cheers, bro. Peace. Peace, mate.